Little did you guys know, I filmed this entire video without audio, so this is take two. <laughs> I'm Carmen, the creator of MakeRealSense.com, a personal finance blog dedicated to teaching you all about the do's and don'ts of personal finance with a little humor on the side. And today we are going to be diving into my budget category it's just to give you guys some transparency and hopefully give you some ideas around your own budget and creating one. So first, before we get into it, I want to let you guys know that my budget is based on a zero-based budgeting system, which means, drum roll, there's no drums. Which means I allocate every single dollar of my paycheck before it hits my account to a budgeting category. Now I have a video on this, I'll link it below so you guys can check it out, but just to give you a quick update or heads up, I use a zero-based budget system on a cash envelopes, or use cash envelopes. Money, 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 money. Um, so I use a zero-based budgeting system, which means I allocate every single dollar of my paycheck before it hits my account, get all of that money down to zero. So if I spend two th or get $2,000 a month on my paycheck, I will allocate $1,000 every two weeks to a different budget category until I get zero. And then again, I use cash envelopes, so that means once I get a zero-based budget, I have all my categories down, I pull out cash for all the categories that it's appropriate for. All right, now with that said, let's dive in. So I was inspired by You Need a Budget to actually adjust my budgeting system just a little bit. So before, I kind of had not a rogue system, but I just threw all my budgeting categories onto an Excel spreadsheet um, and then just allocated all of my money. But to take it a step further, I learned in You Need a Budget to be a little more intentional and prioritize my money. So with that being said, I rearranged my categories to basically what's the most needed to just down to wants. So what do I mean by that? Rent, utilities, food, those should all go at the top of your budget because say for instance you have $1,000 on your paycheck, those necessities need to get paid, paid first before any other thing. So if it's like the gym and all that stuff that might get lapsed, fine, but you need a roof over your head and Folgers in your cup. Just saying. All right, so my budgeting categories are as follows. So it's my money priorities, that's what I do with my budget, one, and then two, I allocate every single dollar of my paycheck to those priorities. So my first priority, of course, is rent. For those of you that might be mortgage, or maybe some of you don't have rent, which is awesome. Uh, if you still live with your parents, continue to try to milk that as long as possible, because that's amazing. Um, so my first budgeting category that I put money towards is rent. I need a roof over my head. I need a place to film this wonderful video. So, rent. Budget categories two and three, I separate these out for a very like weird particular reason. So I do breakfast and lunch together in one category, so that's category number two, and then dinner and eating out by itself for number three budgeting category. So I split these out for a reason that's kind of hard to, well it's not hard to scratch that, it's not hard to Go over. My budget for lunch and breakfast is dinner different than dinner because me and my now spy, spouse, my wife, just got married last Saturday. Bing! My now spy, spouse, we um, split breakfast, or excuse me, we split dinner that goes into our own category, but I usually do my own thing for breakfast and lunch because she has a job that doesn't necessarily allow her to do meal prep and bring things. Um, she's moving in and out of the city all day long, so there's no one location where she can heat up food and do all that stuff. So I have a separate category for breakfast and lunch, and then we budget together on dinner stuff and like going out. So those are my categories two and three. So I have breakfast and lunch, and then dinner separately. Then category number four, which is obviously very important, is the electricity. So I just say this is utilities. This all goes into one little like nice category. Um, just because we gotta keep the lights on, I wouldn't be able to do this video without them. And number five is insurance. I do have a car here in the city that I do pay car insurance for, so that's another really, really big priority for me, obviously, um, is my car insurance, but it's not like the top priority, which is rent. Next categories are more of like wants and luxuries, so this is where I get into like really being um, just intentional about my money and budgeting. It doesn't necessarily help with my debt-free journey, but these are things that just help with the quality of my life. 
So I have things like gym, personal products, dry cleaning, miscellaneous, date night, and things of that nature. So those categories are awesome. All right, so let's talk about personal products. I actually allocate that only one time in the month. I get paid bi-weekly, so every two weeks I get paid. Um, and I only do personal products right at the beginning of the month, and it's only like, I don't know, like 50 bucks for like makeup, shampoo, toothpaste, whatever kind of goes into that category, but I do have a category for personal products. Next, I have dry cleaning. Um, this is more of a luxury. I do work in uh, banking and I do have a lot of shirts and things, blouses and of, of that nature that need to be dry cleaned. And the reason why um, I do take a little more care with my clothes is I don't like to buy them and I rarely buy anything new. Last year I only bought three new work shirts um, and that's probably even more so over the course of like 18 months to two years that I bought two, three new work shirts, excuse me. So dry cleaning helps me give longevity to my clothing and keep that around so I don't have to buy more, put money towards that. But, there's a but. I It is a category that I'm trying to eliminate and hopefully will be eliminated soon in the future. I'm trying to figure out better ways to just cut the cost on dry cleaning because it is expensive. Another category that I have is uh, for date night. Now this is extremely important for me and my now wife. We like to do stuff, we like to stay active, whether or not we uh, use the money or it just sits there for a while, collects a little bit, and then we can go on kind of like a really big date, which would be like dinner and movie here in the city because it's outrageous how expensive everything is. Um, but date night is a great luxury to have. It's a category that I've built out. Another category that I have is Uber. Unfortunately, here in the city, transportation can sometimes not be the most reliable, public transportation. So we have a category for Uber. Now, that's only because, you know, sometimes there is construction on our subway platform, so it may be shut down and we won't have a chance to get anywhere. And bringing a car anywhere in the city requires you to find parking and then also requires you to pay parking if you can't find street street parking, which can be very, very expensive. Um, so having the category for Uber is really nice because that gives us the chance to, you know, if we're out late one night, taking the subway might not be the safest option for us in general, especially late at night. So it's nice to have that um, Uber money set aside to be able to do that. Now, I only put that up to a cap. That's something that's more of like a sinking fund. Um, generally, it grows out of control, so I cap it at 100 because we just don't use it that much, rarely, but so it just sits there, nice and pretty, waiting if we need an emergency ride. Now, laundry here in the city, I'll tell you guys, some buildings for the majority of the population in the United States, if you don't live in a big city, you probably have a washer and dryer in your apartment or your home. Unfortunately, here in this building that I live in, that was a crazy amount to have that as a luxury. So we have laundry mats all throughout the city. They're everywhere. And there is a really popular, popular option within a lot of laundry mats for you to drop off your clothes, pick them back up nice and folded and in a bag. It's such a good luxury. It's an amazing luxury. So I allocate $20 every two weeks towards laundry. It's usually less than that to get my laundry done, but drop it off, um, pick it up the next day. And since I value my time and work so hard during the week, I just don't have the time on the weekend, my precious, precious weekend, to sit in a laundromat for three, four hours waiting for my clothes to get done. And you have to stay in a laundromat because here, they will take your clothes. Anywhere else, maybe not, but I understand and realize it's a luxury. It's something that I'm really, really grateful for. And I'm grateful for the ability to even allocate money towards that. Um, but my time is way more valuable than, you know, sitting in a laundromat for a few hours to try to get that done. So definitely doesn't assist with the debt-free journey, but it's helped tremendously with my quality of life. I don't want to forget anything. It's all written down. Oh, I have a miscellaneous category. I have a miscellaneous category. It's a good buffer to have. I allocate so granular on everything that I do that I don't really have any like fun money, even though I do. It's just in a category called date night. And then I have some sinking funds, um, and I do have a post on that, so I'll link it to below what I mean by sinking funds. It's just things that you save for in anticipation, um, early anticipation of the event or anything, something of that nature happening. So I have sinking funds for Christmas, for travel, and for medical. And before today, or this past week, 
there was a lot of money going towards the wedding. That was essentially my main focus, so I paused all my sinking funds. But now that the wedding's over and we're back on track, trying to save for baby step three or like an emergency fund, that's that money that was going towards the wedding will now go towards debt and sinking funds and all of that nature. So um, my sinking funds are the other categories that I will put money towards periodically in different months and so it hasn't been consistent again just because of the wedding. So I really hope this video helped. I have 13 budgeting categories, 13, 14, somewhere around there that I put money towards and I really just hope that it gave you transparency into where I'm allocating my money, where I'm putting it and that also gives you some ideas and ways that you can budget and be more efficient and more granular with your money. Um, again, a budget is not restrictive at all. You Need a Budget, it's a great book, you can check it out. Um, I'll link to it below. But uh, it's something that allowed me or opened my eyes to being a little more intentional about my money. So prioritizing the categories that I have and then also not being so restrictive. So I have that date night money so I don't have to feel bad about, you know, going to the movies or, you know, having fun with my significant other. Um, so it just helps and budgeting just isn't a diet. It's not, folks. So I hope you learned a lot from this. Leave me a comment if you have any other crazy budgeting categories that you have, like pets and just random. I know people have uh, childcare, phones, and all that. Leave it below. I would love to hear what your budgeting categories are or what your craziest category is. Money, 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 money. Money.